Want a large SUV that can walk the walk as well as talking the talk? What about one that you probably aren't familiar with, Sanyong's Rexton W? If you're secure enough in yourself not to care too much about badge equity and want a large, capable, well-equipped 7-seat 4x4 for sensible money, it makes a lot of sense. Increasingly, large luxury SUVs are all about image, all about badge equity, all about fashion, or at least most of them are. Here's one that's more practically grounded, Sanyong's Rexton W. Of all this South Korean brand's products, the Rexton is probably the one provoking most familiarity amongst UK buyers. Now, that's because it's been around so long, since 2001, in fact, sold in first-generation form until 2006, when a Mark II version offered much the same kind of solid practical proposition. And much the same aging 2.7-litre Mercedes diesel engine, which remained thirsty and smoky even after the Koreans tried to clean it up in 2010. And that meant that the car couldn't even be sold here for most of 2013 because the power plant wasn't Euro 5 compliant. Forget all that now, the Rexton's back. Badged Rexton W, the end letter, a designation for its worldwide remit. A sales challenge that'll certainly be helped by the fact that this much improved car is now equipped with the key thing it always needed, a properly modern, efficient diesel engine. This 2-litre Euro 5 compatible EXDI unit is all Sanyong's own, a power plant that keeps the torque and pulling power of its predecessor while adding lower running costs and greater refinement. At the same time, the brand has updated this car's interior, smartened the looks and added extra equipment, all part of a package of changes that in the Rexton W have bought us a far more modern, up-to-date product. Of course, its core values haven't changed. This car will still tow better than most of its competitors. It's still better suited than many of them to really rough off-roading. And it's still built to outlast you. If Sanyong has succeeded in sugaring these practical virtues with an efficient bit of modern tinsel, it could have a very appealing product indeed on its hands for the right kind of buyer. Let's try it. Modern SUVs are usually marketed as being very car-like. This one isn't. From the commanding driving position, rather refreshingly, it feels exactly what it is. A tough, solidly built, go-anywhere 4x4 that isn't frightened of a bit of hard work. The Rexton's that I've driven in the past have always been like that, but this one uh, has also added a layer of sophistication to its driving manners that was missing before. And Sanyong's own 2.0-litre EXDI diesel engine is a lot more refined than the rattly old 1990s vintage Mercedes lumps used in previous models. Now, I wouldn't want you to assume from this that the South Korean brand has turned this car into some kind of BMW X5 or Mercedes M-Class rival. It hasn't, nor does it wish to. Those models have passenger car-like monocoque chassis and air suspension setups that would compromise this one in extremis. The point I'm trying to make, though, is that Sanyong has narrowed the gap to big SUVs of the modern era, whilst retaining the kind of go-anywhere practicality that most of them can only dream of, and doing so at a fraction of the price. Pitch a Rexton W into a corner, and you'll notice the rather over-assisted steering, and yes, there'll be plenty of lean and understeer. Not significantly more, though, than you'd expect to get in, say, a Mitsubishi Shogun or even a pricey Land Rover Discovery. Though the EXDI engine puts out a relatively modest 155 PS, the performance isn't that far off a disco either, uh, mostly thanks to the useful 360 Newton meters of torque that you get from this one. The grunt delivered low down in the rev range just where you need it, from as little as 1500 RPM. It's perfectly adequate to shift this car's hefty 2.1 ton curb weight, and it's the main reason why this car can offer such a useful 3 ton towing capability. 
True, that's a touch less than a Discovery or a Shogun, but then those cars are much pricier than this one. More relevant is the fact that a close arrival like Kia's Sorento or Hyundai Santa Fe will only tow 2,500 kilograms. It all means that this Sanyong will make light work of hauling large caravans, horse boxes, boats or work trailers. It's not precious about getting up to its axles in mud either. You'd hesitate to take an X5, an Audi Q7 or an M-Class seriously off-road. And even if you did, you'd constantly be worrying about damaging the thing. Now, there's none of that here. The tougher the terrain, the better the Rexton likes it, thanks to its solid ladder frame chassis and heavy duty low ratio four wheel drive setup that splits the torque equally between front and rear axles to provide all round traction and ensure optimum grip even in the most challenging conditions. Steeply undulating terrain is no problem either, thanks to a uh, approach angle of 28 degrees, a departure angle of 25.5 degrees, and a ramp breakover angle of 22.5 degrees. But of course, most of the time, you're going to be attacking the school run rather than the Rubicon Trail, and the paved road, as I've already suggested, is an environment that did prove to be a little alien to earlier Rexton models. Providing you don't try and throw it about too much, this one's much more comfortable travelling on tarmac. Certainly more so than you'd expect a hefty 4.7 metre long, 1.9 metre wide SUV to be. The decently sized 11.7 metre turning circle helps here. For this kind of motoring, I'd really recommend that you try and replace the six-speed manual gearbox of the standard version with the Mercedes-sourced T-Tronic automatic transmission that I'm trying here. This unit slurs its way comfortably through the rev range, though it does show its age in delivering only five speeds at a time when some auto SUVs boast eight or even nine. Still, you don't notice that in the way that you would with a more dynamically inclined car-like 4x4. What was more immediately obvious to me on first acquaintance with this car was the EXDI's engine refinement, a huge improvement on the previous tractor-like 2.7-litre Mercedes unit and every bit as good as far more expensive rivals. So what really matters here is what lies beneath the refreshed panel work, that's where we'll start. For this car has certainly smartened up its act in Rexton W form. A neater chromed grille framed by projector headlamps gives this Sanyong a much more contemporary look. It certainly isn't one immediately suggestive of a budget brand. Moving down the chunky flanks, there are smart alloy wheels, 18 inches here on this plush version, and a prominent Rexton W badge before you get to a tail section where the changes over the old model are less obvious. As before, the chunky rear lights, wraparound glasswork, and neat roof spoiler remain. Underneath it all, though, is the thing that counts, the kind of tough ladder frame chassis that all big SUVs used to have before they uh, all became slick, bling and ineffectual off-road. Yes, it sets this car back behind car-like monocoque-based rivals on tarmac, but for heavy-duty use, there's not much to beat it. And at the wheel? Well, a proper off-roader should have a properly commanding driving position, as this one does. There's a big, imposing leather trim steering wheel too. This is certainly old school SUV motoring. But then in some ways, that's rather refreshing. Sanyong isn't trying for the last word in design elegance here, though having said that, efforts have been made to smarten up the cabin, notably with this smoked trim and these aluminium highlights uh, that have been liberally applied across the centre console that features LCD readouts that can be hard to decipher in direct sunlight. There are a few more soft touch materials though, um, uh, certainly not enough to detract from the built-to-last feel. And storage for the paraphernalia of everyday life? Well, it's true that the door pockets and the glove box could be a little bigger, but overall, there's plenty of room for your odds and ends, and even a special compartment for your sunglasses. And in the second row? 
Well, for the kind of money Sanyong is asking, you'd expect something pretty cramped. Instead, what you get is a car that, thanks to a wheelbase some 30 millimeters longer than a Toyota Land Cruiser costing nearly twice as much, offers decent space for two or three folk, even though the seats themselves don't slide, though they do recline. Now, a nice touch that rival products often overlook is the provision of uh, reading lights here uh, that'll be welcome on longer motorway trips. That long wheelbase means there's room for third row seating too, though you can delete the extra chairs from the specification of your car if you want to, if you need the extra boot space that that'll create. As with most large SUVs, these rearmost chairs are really only meant for children thanks to the tiny footwell that you get. That's due to the high floor necessitated by the four-wheel drive underpinnings. And boot space? Well, with all seven seats upright, you'll not be surprised to hear that there isn't that much of it, just 104 litres, though you do get this useful storage compartment. Still, that dramatically increases, of course, when you push these uh, rear chairs neatly into the floor. Though, unfortunately, you do have to remove the uh, headrest first. Now, once you have, there's uh, 1,338 litres of space opened up. Uh, that's about 35% more room than you'll get with a rival Toyota Land Cruiser. The Rexton W lineup sees an entry-level SX variant at around £22,000, but most will want to find another £2,500 for the leather-lined EX version that I have here. Now, this particular car also has the Mercedes-sourced T-Tronic 5-speed automatic gearbox that would cost an EX buyer another £1,500. All models come with seven seats and the same 155 PS 2 litre EXDI diesel engine. In other words, we're talking the kind of money here that wouldn't even get you an all-wheel drive diesel version of a small RAV4 or Freelander style soft roader. The kind of car that wouldn't give you seven seats, proper off-roading capability or decent towing capacity. Yes, of course, earlier Rexter models were cheaper than this one, but you need to put Sanyong's pricing into current day perspective. What else can you currently buy that can seat more than five people and capably tackle almost anything off the beaten track? You might mention cars like Kia Sorento, Mitsubishi's Outlander or Hyundai Santa Fe, but you don't get a proper low range gearbox on any of those three and they can't tow as much. Anyway, they cost around £27,000 or more. A long wheelbase Mitsubishi Shogun is a closer match, but that'll cost you around £29,000 and much more if you want a car fitted to the kind of spec that's on offer here. Otherwise, for a product properly capable of taking on this Rexton, you'll need the kind of £40,000 budget that would be required for a new Toyota Land Cruiser 3 litre D4D or Land Rover Discovery. Now, I say new because Sanyong actually thinks this car's closest competition will come from used examples of both of these models, which will have led tough lives and won't come with the kind of all-inclusive lengthy warranty that you get here. So yes, you can see this Rexton's appeal. If you're tempted by this Sanyong's proposition, you'll be pleased to find that it's well equipped too. All models get alloy wheels of at least 16 inches in size, a heated lower front windscreen, power heated mirrors, roof rails, a headlamp levelling system, front fog lights, an alarm immobiliser, automatic air conditioning, cruise control, remote keyless entry, Bluetooth phone connectivity and a leather covered steering wheel from which you can control a decent quality six speaker CD stereo. Pay a little more and you can update the audio offering to the clever but rather complicated Kenwood system with iPod connectivity. Or you could go even further and for around a thousand pounds more get the rather fiddly Kenwood touchscreen sat nav setup that I have here. Go for this plusher EX variant and you get leather facings on all seven seats with power adjustment for the driver larger 18 inch wheels, side steps, uh, rear parking sensors, solar control privacy glass, and of course there are options, as well as metallic paint and apart from the in-car entertainment upgrades I've mentioned, plus of course the option of a tow bar, there isn't too much else to spend your money on. Safety wise, 
though this car hasn't been tested by Euro NCAP and doesn't feature curtain airbags, most of the other safety features you'd expect to find are in evidence. So there are dual front and side bags, uh, while Isofix child seat mounts are fitted on outer seats in the second row. To hopefully ensure that you'll never have to use them, there are ABS brakes, ESP stability control with ARP active rollover protection, and for easing down steep slopes, HDC hill descent control. Sangyong has done a reasonable job in bringing the running cost returns of this Rexton up to date, courtesy of its own 2-litre Euro 5 EXDI diesel engine. Compared to the old 2.7-litre Mercedes unit used before, combined cycle fuel economy has improved from 33 to 38.2 miles to the gallon, which will mean an operating range of between 550 and 600 miles from the decently sized 78-litre fuel tank. CO2 emissions have improved too, from a smoky 237 grams per kilometre to a far more acceptable 196 grams per kilometre. Go for the automatic variant that I'm trying here and those figures fall, but only slightly, to 36.2 miles to the gallon and 206 grams per kilometre. Now, the magazines will tell you that these returns aren't up to the levels of cars like Kia Sorento or High-End Santa Fe. Well, of course they're not. Those two models aren't as tough and capable, nor do they have a proper but inevitably heavy low-range 4x4 transmission. So we need to be comparing apples with apples and pitching this car against proper tough SUVs that as well as seating seven can easily tow heavy loads and if necessary, take you through the Serengeti rather than simply through the old muddy car park. Now, once you do that, this Rexton W actually stacks up pretty well. An automatic version like the one that I'm trying here will actually take you a couple of miles further on every gallon than a directly comparable Toyota Land Cruiser 3 litre D4D or Land Rover Discovery. And in comparison with these two, this car actually puts out uh, 7 grams per kilometre less CO2, which could help your tax liability. Residual values should be good too. Used Rexons are in high demand across Sanyong's dealer network. Perhaps the best bit though is the peace of mind that comes as standard with this car, thanks to Sanyong's impressively complete, class-leading five-year limitless mileage warranty. Limitless meaning the lack of the kind of irritating maximum mileage condition that many other brands impose in their small print. Now, as you'd expect, the Sanyong cover deals with all the major mechanical components, uh, including wheel bearings, uh, suspension joints and bushes, uh, steering joints, uh, shock absorbers, and even the audio system. Uh, wearable components, as you'd expect, like uh, clutch discs and brake friction materials, things that could have their life reduced by poor driving, those are covered for one year or 12,000 miles, while the battery and the paintwork uh, have uh, cover for three years. Let's get down to the facts here. There is no other properly capable large SUV in the same price bracket as this one. If you want something really comparable with seven seats that can tow as much or go as far off the beaten track, then you'll need to pay around 30% more for a Mitsubishi Shogun or nearly twice as much for a Land Rover Discovery or Toyota Land Cruiser. Now, this basic point appears to have been ignored by most reviewers who seem to insist on comparing this Sanyong to rivals not capable of even thinking about tackling the tough tasks this Rexton will take in its stride. Yes, of course, the proper tough ladder framed underpinnings necessary to achieve this mean that this car won't tackle the tarmac twisties like a BMW X5, but then no SUV that's this big and practical can do that. Approach a drive in a Rexton remembering this with expectations based around the things this car has been designed to do and you're likely to be very satisfied with what it delivers. And what it delivers is sheer family-sized mud-plugging capability for the kind of money that otherwise would buy you nothing more than, what, something like a diesel automatic Volkswagen Golf. But of course, that's not the kind of comparison that most potential buyers will have in mind. 
having been sensible enough to seek out and consider this car in the first place, they'll be looking at it as an alternative to a used Discovery or Land Cruiser. Now, Sanyong says that it actively encourages potential Rexton W customers to do that, confidently expecting this car's more refined and efficient EXDI engine and the impressive limitless warranty that supports it to swing things in their favour. It's a no-nonsense approach, but in the pretentious age we live in, also in many ways rather a refreshing one. Old school virtues then, from Korea's oldest and most experienced brand. Just the way loyal Sangyong buyers want it.